Right. Here we go. Oh, God help me. <sighs> All right. Okay. So this whole quarantine, staying at home thing has actually been twofold. You know, we are very honest. Right. Um, it's been amazing, especially as working parents, to spend some quality time with our kids. But again, it is 24-hour parenting, which is usually yeah. what we, you normally do, but your kids go to school, mm -hmm. uh, we go to work, we have a little bit more me time, so it definitely has been challenging at times. Well, I know it's been difficult for you too. I mean, juggling everything from work, if you have a chance to work, to school work with the mm -hmm. kids, if you have kids, to trying to make ends meet and trying to you know stay safe and at the same time stay sane. So we'd love to hear how you're dealing with it, whether you have kids or not, please leave those comments in the uh, comments below because we love As to- As Aiden would say. Yeah, comment, comment down below. below. So obviously having the kids home for 24 seven, we have faced some parenting dilemmas and we've noticed that you guys have lots of questions about our parenting. So what a better time to actually dive into those yeah questions and try to answer them as best as we possibly can. And some of the parenting stuff has come up since coronavirus because some of your questions came from before coronavirus mm -hmm. and so uh, we've learned a lot about ourselves and our kids and uh, we're definitely and about each other. We're definitely not perfect. No. Here we go. Here we go. Have I always wanted to be a mother? Absolutely. As long as I can remember um, and I think I have my first memories at like four. I'm not kidding. I loved baby dolls. And what's crazy is that I see the same thing with my daughter, Araya. Araya has this drawer. It's kind of creepy when you open it because you see like all faces. these faces. But she loves dolls as well. I can remember having um, my first real baby. And that's what the dolls were called. Newborn real baby. Keep me busy looking after you. Of course, I think the mommy just has my mom gave it to my sister and I for Christmas. I absolutely loved that thing. I still they I still think they make real babies, but um, it had this special smell to it. It smelled really sweet, and the reason All why the they smells. called it no, not the poopy smells. smells I wish. In there. <laughs> um, so at a very young age, I learned to hold the baby's head upright. And my favorite thing about the real baby is that they had this bottle. I don't know how they did it, but it was this bottle that you would feed, obviously the baby, and it had, it looked like it had real milk in it. It would I even have those. the bu bubbles in it. And when you would tilt it over, the milk would just disappear. So I felt like I was somebody. I had a crib, I had the stroller, I had the diapers, I had the changing clothes. So yes, I have always wanted to be a mom. I wanted to have four kids, but the reality of parenting, having kids a little bit later, we are done at two. Two in a barbecue. Two in a barbecue. That doesn't surprise me about all what you just said, Ada. By the really? Way. No. Why? Well, have you always wanted to be a father? Absolutely, but I didn't have babies and strollers. I was, I just, I was always around kids, so my parents, even though my family's very small, it's just me, my mom, my dad, and my grandparents, and my brothers. So just six of us, really, I grew up with, counting myself. I was always around kids. Anytime one of my dad's employees at the grocery store or maybe cousin came to town from outside of the state and they had a, a baby, my parents made sure from a young age we held the baby and we were around the kids at two, three, four, so we understood the different stages of child development just as a, as a kid, so you didn't look at it funny, you weren't... Uh, you, you weren't surprised if you were around a child later on in life. It was you know, a way to teach your children how to be around kids. Remember my grandma who li didn't live too far from us, his, uh, her neighbor came over one day with his son and I was about eight and the son was probably mm -hmm. about two. And I must have spent an hour in the yard with him uh, just playing. And I remember him coming out and saying to me, you know, one day, I'll never forget this, one day you're gonna be a good father. And my, really? And my grandma was so proud of that. So I always wanted to be a dad. Um, there were times I wondered if I was ever going to be a dad because I was traveling so much and hadn't gotten married yet. But you know, when I met Tamara right away, I was like, "Oh, this is the person I could have I could have kids with," and I and I looked forward to oh it. Oh my gosh! Well, thank you. Well, thank oh, you. I will tell you this: when we first started dating, the, you know how you have ladies out there. You know how you have like a checklist. First of all, make sure it's realistic. Okay. 
<laughs> um, mine was I wanted a family man. I wanted a guy who loved children as much as I did. And that was one of the first things that I noticed about Adam. He was very, very close to his niece, Elena. They loved each other so much, and I saw that connection. And uh, the same thing with Alex. Alex is older now. Obviously, we've been my together nep- for nephew, Alex, yes, yeah. Adam's nephew, Alex. And I loved their connection. And I was like, okay, this guy definitely loves family, and I can see this is a good thing too. Because children, kids are like dogs. They know. They know. They can sniff somebody's character out. And seeing kids love my husband, and still to this day, kids love kids love Adam. And I think, well, kids love me. I'm a kid. Too, they can tell that I think we love children. And yes, Adam is a child. She has three children. I do. I'm so happy you, <laughs> you own that. Were you scared about becoming parents? No. That's a question. No. I wasn't scared about becoming a parent because I'd already become a husband. And I think that for me, <laughs> just that. Well, no, in Parent, a sense, husband. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, because of the fact that we got married a little bit later, and I had uh-huh. been traveling the world and doing things. I knew that getting married was a commitment, and that I would, the decision couldn't just be me saying yes, I'm gonna go. I would have to make a decision with my wife's life and her opinion in mind. So got the it. next step is now having kids. Now there's a second big variable that comes into play there so I wasn't afraid of being a parent at that point because I'd already kind of made the big step for me which was I was ready to be a parent I didn't know what it was going to take to be a parent (laughs) I did see my brother and some friends have kids and I spent a lot of time around then so I had a little bit of an inkling Mm -hmm. um so uh I I looked forward to it but I wasn't scared I was uncertain but I wasn't scared how about you um for me I think you answered that perfectly maybe not scared Mm -hmm. but uncertain We had amazing parental examples in our life. Mm -hmm. My sister, she had Cree earlier, so I got to see, you know, not only a sister, but my twin go through that. The coolest thing is, is our supportive group, they were very honest about what parenting looked like. So when you see that ahead of time, you're like, oh, okay. But not only that, we saw them get through it. Mm -hmm. So I knew that if they could get through the challenges, we could get through it. Now, the one thing that I was afraid of, and it's completely different when you're a woman carrying the baby, I would have to say that whole like pregnancy process with the first child, I mean, every cramp, every pain, you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? And then you think of the birthing process. Some people don't realize, um, women who obviously haven't had kids before, or men, it's like when you are growing a baby for the first time, there are lots of aches and pains. Your uterus is seriously like stretching and your skin is stretching. And if you had morning sickness, which I did with Aiden, remember babe, I had so much morning sickness, it became a norm for Adam to just kind of like pull over and be like okay go on throw what, up what do you need you know uh, remember one time she was she was she was craving a certain type of cinnamon roll and then time, number time pickles for the cinnamon roll i drove to i think nine different places remember she called me about two and a half hours later because in la you can't go to nine places in a very short time frame yeah and she's like i didn't even go that far away I think the furthest one way was only three miles and she's like where are you and i'm like i found the damn cinnamon roll <laughs> Which one? No, it, 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 it had to taste like the one from Costco. Yeah, it had to be like the Costco cinnamon roll, but the Costco Costco near our house then was out. Yeah, so I So I had that. to go find one that was similar. And a lot of places weren't uh, surprising how many donut shops in Los Angeles don't make cinnamon rolls. So if you own a donut shop in LA, you might want to think about it. And another thing, because I think this is really important to talk about just for pregnancy, um, I dealt with depression. Mm -hmm. when I was 19 years old and I had this fear of having postpartum depression. And the reality is, is I did. So I thought I had baby blues with Aiden. Mm -hmm. Having postpartum the second time around with Uriah, I realized it was postpartum depression. And that's one of the things I feel like women may um, confuse because postpartum depression is actually on a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And when you think of postpartum initially, you think, oh, women who want to do harm to their 
to their children and I knew I wasn't having that right. those thoughts um, but yes I did experience postpartum depression with both of my children I am here to say though if you do experience postpartum depression make sure you get the support you need especially from your loved ones um, talk to your husband about it talk to you that's what I mean because like don't helps. try to hide it mm -hmm. talk to your husband about it talk to your friends about it and get the help you need there is nothing wrong with asking for help and also there is light at the end of the tunnel I think the next question that I want to know from both of us is, okay. and people have been asking too is like what mistakes have we made well oh. I'll tell you this, from being a parent, everyone says no matter how much you've been prepared, no matter how much your family and friends yep. have helped you, no matter how much you've watched your brother, sister, parents, grandparents, friends, parent, you're always going to make stupid mistakes and you have to be okay with that. There's been times I remember thinking, what have I, what did I do? Why, <laughs> why didn't I go this route rather than that yeah. route? And you know, it's like anything, every kid's different. And I think that, you know, they always say the second time around is easier. That's true. But sometimes... Second it's time different. around, yeah, because you've already learned the mistakes of the first time around, yeah. and you know, having a boy then a girl, the boy being first, they're so different, and there's so many things that will work with Aiden that won't work with Araya. So I think my biggest mistake as a parent sometimes is not sitting down and thinking about, okay, this is the way Aiden is. We do, yes. do it more don't now. compare. Don't, not, not even, I don't compare. For me, it's not. This is the way Aiden is. That may work not work for Araya. You are a perfect parent until you are one. And if you watch the reel, you'll hear me say that. And it's because I own the mistake that I made before I was a parent judging other parents and how they raise their kids. Because different strokes for different folks, <laughs> meaning every household has a different way of life and a different way of doing things. I feel like as long as you are doing your best, you are doing it with love and the um, information, like you've done your research mm -hmm. and you've experimented what works for you and your family and your child, do you. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. There was a time I remember I said, I am never going to have my kids sleep with me, ever. <laughs> I was so judgmental when I say that. I look back and I'm like, Damn! She knocked it out of the water like the first week. <laughs> like the first week because, get this, we were both working parents um, and at that time, well with Aiden, I was a stay at home mom actually well, for then, six, seven and months. And then Aiden got RSV on top then, of it. But Aiden got RSV she on top of it. Him. I wanted to be around him. Then I started working. You miss your kids. Adam was gone. You, you miss your kids when you're not there. Mm -hmm. So when you come home, you want to be with them. And if they want to sleep with you, just realize though, if you start that, huh. it's probably going to last for a, a while. Years. Aiden has been in our bed, meaning he sleeps in his own bed now. Right. But he made that choice yeah. with a little um, just encouragement from mm -hmm. us. And it happened gradually and it happened naturally. So the biggest mistake that I made was that I thought I knew all the answers before I was a parent. You know, it's kind of like yeah. those uh, fans on the sidelines the further, when they're like, the famous, you suck, you could do better. The further away they sit, the, the smarter they get. Yes, sense. when we all know doggone well. That they're full of crap. That, yo, this person has been playing, playing football for years. Anyways, so I would say I judged. That was the mistake. Right. What was the best parenting advice you received from... Uh, your mom or I your think, dad? I think my brother, my mom, my dad all kind of said the same thing, which was adapt. Just adapt. You know, and that's kind of my, my biggest regret and my biggest advice in the sense that there are times I wish I would have adapted faster. For example, Aiden, high energy. Mm -hmm. And I get, I'd raise my voice sometimes and be like, hey, and then I realized over time, I did adapt, but I could have adapted faster and realized that with him, you kind of have to sit him down and be like, dude, <laughs> even at three and four years old, this is the way it needs to go. And I'm going to take this away from you. To, for him, that works, taking something away. Mm -hmm. With Araya, she's more stubborn and she's more easily um, swayed in the sense I can be, I can get, raise my voice a little bit and be like, Araya, no, and she'll stop. But taking something away from Araya does not work. So they're totally different. So the best advice to me that I was given was adapt, spend time. Any, I put the phone down. Quality time. Put the phone down. Try to, I mean, like even now I notice I'll be doing something really fast and Araya will want to tell me something or Aiden will want to tell me something. I'll be like, just a second. And I'll be like, no. And then you see their little like sigh, like, 
Yes, you just take the time because it's not going to be. And actually, one more advice, too, from one of my buddies. And he said, Adam, my kids are now 14 and 17, and they want no time with me. He goes, you're only going to have about a six to seven year window. He goes, take it. So find that time. Put that phone down. 